G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Friday evening here in Australia, market up ever so slightly. We're at 2.31 trillion, and now we're at 2.34 trillion. Still moving up, which is nice, but there's an interesting story that I think could give an indication of something that might be happening. But I only could, and again, as I always say, none of this is ever financial advice. It is just my personal opinion, and that's all. All right. Bitcoin dominance, though, continues to rise. People are getting more bullish about Bitcoin at the moment. It could be getting ready to do a big run. I mean, it already sort of has. It went from, you know, only 40-ish thousand up to sort of 54,000, nearly 56,000 in a matter of seven days. So that's a pretty big move. And look, we have been moving up for a little while now. So something to keep in mind. Volume down a little bit. Bitcoin just under $55,000. The weekend is upon us. At least here in Australia, we still got Friday to go uh, stateside time, but here in Australia, it is here. So are we going to see, you know, sometimes it's a traditional, you know, bit of a uh, correction on a weekend, but it's not always that way. And look, gas prices, again, still uh, up pretty high, starting to rise, and that's just a basic transaction. People are starting to get a little bit feverish and, again, jumping into all sorts of altcoins and doing all sorts of stuff uh, on on the blockchain at the moment. All right, top 100, what's done the best? Because the market's generally up, but only just a fraction, under half a percent. Whoo, Phantom, 28%, nice. MDEX, 20%, very nice. Bitcoin SV, out of nowhere. Oh my God, up 16%. Harmony, Yearn Finance, haven't heard too much from them in a while. Luna, I mean, this has been doing extremely well. Chili's finally starting to make a move. It really has traveled sideways for quite some time. Elrond Gold doing nice. Uh, Arweave, look, heaps of nice moves there, particularly the double digit ones. That's what you want to see. But for me, it's that 15% and above in 24 hours where I get, you know, fairly uh, excited <laughs> and anything under that don't get me wrong still nice but I don't get as excited you know 12 uh, nearly 13% still pretty good what about on the, the other side of the coin though what hasn't performed so well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours well there we go Shiba Inu but look you know, if you've been in Shiba Inu for more than the last 24 hours, uh, you're probably still sitting pretty good. DYDX, look, Shiba Inu really the only, you know, big kind of dump. And again, that thing moved like 100% in a matter of seven days or something like that. So, you know, of course there's going to be a correction. It doesn't mean it's done for Shiba Inu. Now, I don't own any Shiba Inu and I'm not going to buy any Shiba Inu, but I'm not silly enough to think that this couldn't still pump. I just... I don't want to chase pump coins when there's nothing fundamentally behind them. Now, a lot of people could come out and say that's pretty much all crypto except for maybe Bitcoin. And look, they may be sort of right about that. But yeah, for me, Shiba Inu, uh, just not touching it. Doge, I mean, it's still, you know, very similar. I've bought Doge a few times and got in and got out and doubled my money, which was very nice. But if I had held it, it would have done a whole lot better unless I held it all the way up to sort of the 70, 80 cents that I got to and now it's dropped back. So something to keep in mind. And then the other loss is very, very small. I mean, generally 5% and below. I mean, Axie Infinity down 4%, but it moved quite nicely as well. You know, Helium down. Stellar Lumens had a little bit of a pump in the 24 hours before though. So again, a little bit of a correction. That's, you know, to be expected. Something doesn't just pump day after day after day and have no corrections. It can pump really hard in seven days, but there might be one or two days in that seven days where it's in the red just a little bit. And that's pretty much what you're seeing here, in my personal opinion. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we can see we broke through that kind of 52,000. Now we've come down and it's almost retested this. If this holds and starts to continue, particularly can hold over the weekend because you know, as I said before, are we now back to the traditional weekend sort of correction? Again, it's only the weekend here in Australia. We're not quite there stateside time. But I wouldn't be surprised if this comes back down and does a full hard retest of 52,000. It doesn't mean it has to. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. But if this just continues to go up, this is still quite bullish. I mean, this is almost there. It's close enough. And that's what you want. When something breaks through a key level of resistance, you generally, not always, but if it like gets over it by a bit, comes back down and retests it and then starts to move up again, that is a quite bullish move. That generally tells you that there's still more in this. But 
it's not the case if it comes through uh, comes back down retest and it just keeps bouncing on this line now some people say well the more time it bounces on it the more uh, bullish it is and other people say the more bearish it depends what the momentum is if this was uh, just a key resistance that has a breakout and it just keeps bouncing on it and the it looks like it's getting lower then it can be very bearish but generally in a in a bull market which i believe we are in this is a pretty bullish trend so we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens over the weekend but hey we got through this mark like i was hoping we would again i'm still not really sold until we kind of do around about here fifty-eight thousand. we could still get to about fifty-eight thousand, and this still be part of a dead cat bounce i hate to say that i don't want to again spread fud and be bearish i don't think that's what's going to happen but I just have it in the back of my head that that's still a possibility. An unlikely possibility, dead cat bounces generally don't come back quite so high. They probably would come back to sort of around about here, maybe here, again, old resistance, and then roll over. But uh, so far, we've gone through it. And again, we can see we had resistance here. This was resistance points, hence why we talk about that $52,000 mark. Support and resistance. We seem to be using it as support at the moment. All right. This is a story that I'm taking note of. So the third largest Bitcoin whale sold 1,500 Bitcoin at 54,300. The entity has been realizing hefty profits during the recent rally above 50,000. So this is the third largest Bitcoin whale and they're taking only some profits though. But are they? I see, taking them at 54,300, I get the feeling like they are expecting a rejection somewhere around here and possibly a good one. A lot of people on YouTube and Twitter are saying that they believe there's one more big crash to come before we really go into the last, you know, hoorah as they say for this bull cycle. So I'm wondering if this whale is suspecting that maybe we're gonna get up close to 60-ish thousand again, maybe around about here. Maybe this still is a dead cat bounce or maybe they just want to get people to believe it's still a dead cat bounce. Maybe we have one more big rejection in the next couple of days, maybe over the weekend or next week. Again, bring us right back down to maybe here, who knows? But that is very interesting that they have been taking profits over the 50K level. But that doesn't really mean anything because even the biggest whales don't know exactly when the market's going to move because there's only a few people that really have enough Bitcoin that they can really move the market that much. I'm not saying they can't move the market in a little bit, but I don't know if they would have enough to, you know, dump the price from 54,000 all the way back down to, let's say, you know, 38,000 or 42,000 without maybe selling all of it. And then what happens if it just goes back up? You know, then they don't have a whole lot. I don't think that's what they do anyway. I'm getting a bit off track, but I found that very interesting. So it's making me think that they're probably suspecting that there is going to be a bit of a correction before we get up to new all time highs, possibly again, somewhere around here, kind of the 58. Uh, $60,000 level, bit of a correction back down to somewhere here, maybe. All right, we talked, or I talked, because <laughs> that's what happens on this channel, I talk. I talked the other day about Bitcoin miners weren't really selling their Bitcoin. They were borrowing USD to pay for their fees. The amount of ETH held by miners reaches highest level since 2016. So it seems Ethereum miners are doing exactly the same. They are buying and they are holding. Now, are they simply holding for higher prices to sell all of it? Maybe, I think there's definitely a part of that. But I also think they know that the time is coming where they can't mine any more Ethereum. So how do you get more Ethereum if you can't mine it anymore? You need to stake it. So I think that's the bigger thing. They'll still be able to make plenty of money out of staking Ethereum if Ethereum continues to do well and they'll be able to sell, particularly if they've got you know, thousands you know, of Ethereum, they'll make plenty of that. But I don't think it's simply that they're waiting for higher prices. I think that's definitely part of it and I think they'll sell a good whack of it, don't get me wrong, but I think they are simply holding on because they're now gonna move into staking. That will be the new way that they make money because they can't mine anymore. They'll use their miners to mine other stuff and they'll use their Ethereum to just continually stake and most likely sell some of those profits to keep themselves profitable and running. But probably, again, if Ethereum does everything it's supposed to in Ethereum 2.0, they'll simply just hold and stake. So very, very interesting as well. All the big miners on both Ethereum and Bitcoin 
They're not selling, they're holding. That's got to tell you something. A lot of these people are the actual whales as well, the miners and things like that. They have large amounts of Ethereum and Bitcoin and you know other coins that have been mined. All right, Bitcoin NFTs are emerging on stacks. So stacks used to be block stacks. They build not exactly on Bitcoin, but they build on the Bitcoin blockchain. So they're like a, a sort of a side chain and things like that. So this will be interesting to see if it can take off. And you know, this is one of the NFTs there. I still haven't bought a single NFT and you know, I've probably missed out on unbelievable gains, but I just, yeah, I've been hesitant. I didn't know enough about it. I didn't want to go and buy some crappy NFT that you know would lose all its value. And you know, the price of gas to try and buy an NFT has meant, you know, minimum price for a lot of NFTs was, you know, near a hundred dollars or more. And then, I mean, you just look at the price of some of, you know, crypto punks and board ape yacht club and things like that. They were literally in the thousands and millions of dollars. So I was automatically <laughs> out of the good NFTs, but we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. You know, do you think NFTs are going to be a big thing on the Bitcoin blockchain? Because they're definitely big on Solana and particularly Ethereum. But will NFTs have those same kind of crazy gains on these other chains and particularly bitcoin you know we all see bitcoin as that just you know store of wealth store of value can it be something more time will tell all right last but not least new chain alice report reveals who's leading the world in crypto adoption they said it was america but it seems now it's vietnam and india are topping the list now india is very very interesting considering Considering, <laughs> I apologize, considering how anti crypto their government was for quite some time there. But look, you know, India's government, it appears to be, I mean, they were anti crypto first. So I get the feeling like America has sort of followed their suit more than you could say India followed America's suit. They were very anti, and now it seems they're loosening the reins and all the rest of it. Was it because they were, you know, collecting crypto themselves or you know just trying to get themselves set with regulation who knows but very excuse me very very interesting that india is now one of the you know leading countries in the world in cryptocurrency a lot of really smart developers and things uh come out of india that we you know if you don't know then <laughs> i'm letting you know that there's some very smart people that come out of india i'm not saying it's the only place there's smart people from everywhere around the world but a lot of yeah, a lot of smart people, particularly in crypto space, uh, computers, technology and things like that, they do come from India. We have a number of, uh, quite a large population of uh, Indian university students here in Australia. We might may have a little bit less now with all that COVID thing. I think some of them went home, but also there's plenty of them that are trapped here and they can't uh, get home because of that. And that's a completely different story. But anyway, some interesting things there and this... Uh, one really kind of took me back. I was like, "Radio, one of the biggest whales is taking profits. And it just made me think, don't forget to take profits. This could all turn around and maybe this is the dead cat bounce and we're about to go a whole lot lower. Or maybe, again, they're just going, "Radio, I think it's probably going to get up to maybe around near this old all-time high and have another big correction and they've just got cash now sitting on the side to maybe buy a dip back down at 48,000, you know, 45,000, 40,000, 38,000. Who knows? Very, very interesting though. I've kept that in mind. Uh, and again, uh, the amount of ETH that miners are holding. I think both those two stories were really key. All right, that's it from me. It's the weekend here. I'm going to go enjoy it. I hope your weekend is a good one. I'll be back tomorrow. Stay safe. Be kind to one. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're all on that game train, and I'll see you next time.